why are other inspectors called deal killers? It's not a matter of you telling them they have to fix everything in their house. What it means is that you have to tell them what's wrong with the house. Okay, so I'm here in Vegas with my good friend Marker, Michael Marzian, and he runs a home inspection company out of Wisconsin. He's been operating for four years, and out of the four years, his first year, he was a single man operator, and at the end of his four years, he has gone up to three inspectors? Yes. Three inspectors. So he's operating a three inspector firm out of Wisconsin, and he didn't, he started by coming to inspection uh, conferences such as inspection fuel but he didn't learn it from the conference he learned it from the people he met so um, one of the things is he's gonna tell his story a little bit and then we're gonna ask him controversial questions about the real estate market um thanks for having me Chris um, I started back about four years ago almost five years ago now as a single inspector firm I came to these conferences and it really was uh, the classes are interesting the vendors are always interesting too. you get to see a lot of neat stuff that you don't see otherwise um, but it was meeting the other inspectors, and particularly the really good inspectors that made the conference worthwhile to me. Um, I met some of the legends in uh, inspecting world, Chris being one of them, the video guy, and uh, merely sharing ideas, talking about what works and what doesn't work, and explaining the different steps that everyone's business as it goes through the growth phases has really been instrumental to the success of my business. Nice. That's. You know, that's perfect. And uh, um, one of the things that I've noticed is working with Michael is really great because we have an, kind of an open relationship when it comes to the phone. He calls me if he has any home inspection problems of something he's going to, and then I can call him for whatever reason. And you'd be surprised, even though he's in Wisconsin, we have the same exact problems when it comes to running our businesses. So if you're looking at joining conferences, don't worry about what conference it is, Ashy, Internachi, Fuel. It doesn't really matter. It matters about the people that are there and the people that you're going to grow these relationships. Michael and I, we probably only talked maybe four times over the past two years, but because we're in the same environment, same history, we have a really good friendship. Okay, so that's going to lead us into the question phase. And one of the biggest struggles that we have as home inspectors, I'm dealing with it even today, is actually finding good home inspectors to work for your company. I think on my first three years, I spent like $30,000 on failed experiences with hiring people. What do you look for whenever you hire home inspectors? When I'm looking to hire a home inspector, I'm looking for the ability to communicate, and I'm looking for a strong base of knowledge. They don't have to know everything, but they have to have the ability to communicate what they do know, and then ultimately by bringing them into the business, we get them the base of knowledge, which makes them into an excellent inspector. The ability to communicate is one of the skill sets I find very difficult to train, so you have to have at least some natural ability to communicate complex topic, topics in a simple manner make people understand the results of what you find during a home inspection. I completely agree with that. Whenever I'm talking with them, my, I go through three phases when I hire someone. The first phase is we send out a mass email of contacting all the home inspectors. And then after that, the second phase is we'll do a phone interview. And if they can't even pass that phone interview, they get knocked out. So we'll get like 20 to 30 applications. And out of the 20 to 30 applications, we might get three people and out of the three people then they have to do a ride along with me and that's how I determine the ability to communicate and then also you have to have a drive you have to have a certain type of drive that will be there follow you wherever you need to go and answer all the questions you need so I think uh, you know the ability to communicate is the number one I always like to say you could be a good home inspector but be, be poor communicator but you're a bad home inspector but you could be a really good communicator be friendly be a terrible home inspector but be a good home inspector if that makes sense it makes no it sense. makes sense sometimes yeah. having a natural curiosity and the ability to say I don't know can really differentiate an average home inspector to a good one I mean sometimes I'll see something and I'll just want to go at it and keep finding out why is that different than what I've seen before or having the ability to say I'm sorry I just don't know what um, is wrong here or if this is correct but I'm gonna do some research and, and get the answer and I will let you know um, you don't you're not expected to know everything about everything at all times and having that ability to say I don't know is important to a good woman's way. oh I completely agree that was one of the first things that I got in the field I was always scared to say I don't know and then eventually after maybe my second year in I was like hey I don't know but I'm gonna go find that out for you and they like that more they know that I'm not BSing them as my way through the inspection so you develop that trust of 
that communication there. So I set that expectation early. When I introduce my customers, I say, you're gonna get an I don't know out of me at least once today, maybe twice. And um, as I find something that I don't know about, I actually call it out. I say, I, I told you to get one, and they got one. They got an I don't know. <laughs> but I do follow through, and I do make sure that they know it, even if it means an email on the side saying, what I saw is correct, and these are the reasons it's correct. And it helps them have a better understanding of their house. Man, that's awesome. Man, you're making this easy for me. <laughs> Thanks. All right, so we're gonna hit in the, the touchy one real quick. Um, the touchy one is, is I always like to bring up topics with other home inspectors, especially I know successful home inspectors. Why are other inspectors called deal killer? You know, that, that's always a scary term and I've actually never even experienced that before. Being saying, oh, that inspection company kills deals. Why do you think our companies are separated and not called deal killers and then theirs are? Well, I think some people actually in this uh, profession, unfortunately, take that as a compliment. And I don't think that's a compliment at all. I think it's a, a testament to your inability to communicate the problems with a house. Every single house is going to have problems, and that's why they've hired us. They didn't hire us for compliments. That's what real estate agents are for. So they hired us to find what's wrong, but they've also hired us to take that information and produce it or pro provide it to them in a manner that makes sense and that they can understand. So walking into a deal and becoming a deal killer can oftentimes have something to say with the ability to communicate what you're saying. Um, some things are scary but not many things in a house are truly scary to people and um, making it scary to them you're doing your customers a disservice. So it's not a matter of you telling them they have to fix everything in their house but it means that you have to tell them what's wrong with the house and in some cases tell them who has to fix it or how hard it will be to fix but um, in the end it's their decision to decide what's going to be fixed and what's not going to be fixed. And that's not our job to tell them that. And I think it, uh, providing the straight information. And sometimes they'll ask you for priorities. And I think that's your job also to say, well, this is a bigger issue to this house than that is. Um, but if you are a clear communicator, I don't think the deal killer moniker will come into play. Um, everybody, including the real estate agents who have to write the amendments, want to know the facts. They want to know the details. And they want to be able to put it to paper in a way that makes sense to everybody. Oh man, that also falls in, ties it up all together. It's about being a communicator. It is. That, that's what it comes down to is the communication. That's what I, whenever I'm sitting down with my team and I'm coaching everybody, I always talk to them. It's about the communication and the process of the home inspection. It even goes from your phones being answered so it's clear of when you're going to be there and how you're going to do the inspection. You show up, the first thing you do is you tell them how the inspection is going to go and what to expect. You do your inspection and at the end it's the communication again of how you go over the problems. It's not, not every problem is scary like you're saying and whenever someone makes a GFCI scary or um, some other, some types of plumbing scary, well sometimes you have to remember that home has been there two times my age, it's been there for 60 years and it's still working. So <laughs> that is one of the things that I've noticed in this field is the word deal killer and I hope that we can eliminate that one. Right. My advice to young home inspectors is pretty simple and if you're not busy because your schedule hasn't been filled yet, start spending that time studying things. Take a major system of that home and study it till the end. Then get another system of the home and study it till the end. Your knowledge can never be broad enough. So the more information that you have in your head and the more information you can provide, the greater your value. And lastly, never market on a, in a bad mood. If you're not in a good mood, don't try to market your company. It will come out that way. So if you happen to be not in a particularly good mood, go do something else. But if you're in a really good mood, feeling positive, you're seeing a lot of inspections on your horizon, everything's coming around, those are the times that you get on Facebook and you post positive things. You get out on your website, you start doing things. Because that positive energy will come out in what you do. Nice, perfect, yeah, positive energy. <laughs> we all need that, especially in the inspection world. Right. All right, cool. Uh, well, that concludes the interview with uh, Michael here. If you have home inspection needs and you're in the Wisconsin area, you need to call Michael. And then I'm Chris with Day Action. If you please always like and share the videos. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks, guys. All right, so I'm here with my friend uh, Michael Morosa. He runs a home inspection company out of Wisconsin. He's been operating for the what? Marzian. Marzian. Have I been saying it yes, wrong this yes, long? Yes, your whole life. Yes. <laughs> Why have you not told well, me? Well, because it never came up before. Marzian. Marzian. All right. Wisconsin. <laughs> but that's just spelled too. That is funny. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Let's go. <laughs> Sorry. So 